Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming and welcome to the latest Road to 30k video. Um, at the end of the last video you saw that I started my Breacher Squad and as you can see they are now complete, um, all with their red helms. These guys are my red marks. Um, I got this inspiration from an audiobook uh, to do with the Ultramarines called The Red Marks, surprisingly enough. Uh, if you've listened to it, it's a fantastic audiobook. It's about guys that have been marked for censure that are now kind of treated as an elite squad and they go off and do specialist missions um and that's kind of what i saw with the breacher squad because they board ships and they you know they they go through the corridors of of captured barges and things clearing them out of the enemy troops so that's kind of what i went with and i think it works really really well i think they stand out compared to normal 30k ultramarines where red helms really aren't a thing um it's a bad sign at this point um but yeah, I think it works really well. So let's grab a couple of these. So, first guy here. Some really, really nice detail on the shields. They're all exactly the same. Um, green lenses on the helms, because I normally do red, but of course red wouldn't work with these. There's the sensor on the back, so there's like a little eyepiece that they see through um, that goes through the back, so they can see where they are with their shields. And then everything else is pretty much standard. All transfers are on, bases are all done. Uh, all have got the Forge World upgrade shoulder pads. There's not much variation. I brought two sets of these. So you get the normal 10-man plastic kit and then you get the Breacher Squad's uh, upgrade kit. So this guy's slightly different. He's got the bionic eye um, with the board and shield and the sword as well. So I think if there's going to be a leader of my Breacher Squad, I think it'd probably more likely be him because it'd be easier to spot. Um, or there is, uh, there's two guys here that have got get them back in focus two guys here they've got their silver schools on top of their helms but i think the guy with the bionic eye would will stand out a bit better and and uh be obvious which one my sergeant is so i've tried to make them unique so this guy's kind of leaning forward a little bit on his base he's kind of just about to, to lunge at the enemy this guy's kind of in a shield down open stance um and then the rest of them all fit all form that shield wall so these breacher squads cost you about 200 points they are thereabouts they have something called hardened armor um, which basically means that if hit by a blast weapon they can re-roll uh, any failed armor saves but they also minus one away from their sweeping advance rolls and their run moves um, so these are pretty good they the broad the breacher shield or the boarding shield denies the char if they get charged the boarding shield denies the enemy uh, their plus one for attack but it also means that they don't get plus one either um, because they haven't got two specialist weapons in their hands. Now, these guys are in um, normal power armor. They can be upgraded to Artificer armor for, I think it's 10 points a mini, um, but that would make them, as 10 of them, so that's an extra 100 points just for a two-up save. So that's that's a bit of a dilemma. It makes them a lot more, and more, lot more expensive than normal tactical marines, but from painting style, I th I'm really happy with these. I'm really happy how these guys have turned out. Um, but... I haven't only been painting up my Breacher Squad, I've also been painting up my Ultramarines Command Squad. So, there's a Praetor in here and there's obviously the Standard Bearer. So I'm going to show you the Standard Bearer first. Now this guy you might not see on Battle Reports. This guy's more likely going to sit in my display cabinet by Rebute Gulliman. Um, so we'll grab him first. Really, really nice kit to put together. I really love the cape over the shoulder and the Gold Eagle on the thing. And then their banner. Now I've done this one with transfers myself. Um, now, what I wanted to use is on the Forge World transfer sheet, there's a beautiful, well, there's two of them, beautiful like Ultramarines, well, banner, basically, but it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit onto this sculpt. And because of the, the waves at the bottom of the banner, it's really awkward to fit. I was going to try and fit it and trim it down and all that, and I ruined one of them. So I was a bit annoyed by that because that's it's a beautiful transfer. Um, so I decided to build my own. So I've got the U's across the top and the bottom from the Ultramarines. I've got 13 for the Legion. I've got the Ultramarines logo in the middle. Um, but yeah, exact, apart from that, it is exactly the same paint job. All done there. This guy has a uh, bolt pistol in his hand as well. Um, and then I've put the Ultramarines logo in the middle of the gold circle. And what I actually did... I needed some inspiration when I when I knew that I was going to have to do my own banner for my Ultramarines and I was going to have to use transfers. Um, I googled Roman Legion. I googled Roman history and I looked at the Roman Legion's banners and I thought there was one in particular that stood out and apart from a slight tweak with the Ultramarines across the top, 
very similar to how the Romans had it. it suits the ultramarines down to the ground it really really does the other model that you get in this kit is the praetor down here now in the standard power armor again really really nice kit to paint up i really enjoy painting this one up love the uh love the cloak over the shoulder and the gold eagle I've had a few comments about the uh the face he's pulling he's quite angry um nice power sword nice addition onto his uh onto his gauntlet on the uh, arm there um, I was going to go with the Ultramarines upgrade kit shoulder pad, but I thought I, I really like the the um, bezeled one, the one that rises up. So I kept that, and then I've just used a larger Ultramarines transfer on him as well. Um, I've gone with red for the for the coats, just just so they stand out a little bit differently. But one thing I've the reason I've painted this miniature up is because it now gives me the option to run him as Captain Ramus uh, Ventanos, and he is a hero from Calf. He um, he was one of the main reasons why uh, the Ultramarines fought back on Kalf as, as that planet was being destroyed. Um, he is 155 points. He's weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 5, strength 4, toughness 4. He's got 3 wounds, he's initiative 5, he has 3 attacks, he's leashed at 10, he's in a 3 up save. So he comes in normal standard power armour. Um, he is equipped with an iron halo, a power sword and a bolt pistol. He has melt bombs, he has a nuncio vox, he has frag and crack grenades. So he's pretty good. He's power armor, so he's going to get a 3-up save, but he's got an Iron Halo to keep him alive. Uh, Nuncio Vox, really helpful. Really helpful with Scorpius Whirlwind and all kind of this stuff here. Um, he has some special rules that go with him as well. So he, ha he has a Cunning Strategist, which is while he is alive, the opposing player has a minus one modifier to all reserve rolls. And then I can choose to re-roll any reserve rolls myself. So he's kind of orchestrating the battle and, and allowing... For people to come on from reserve and i like that his warlord trait is resolute planning so basically what his rule is he has the stubborn special rule uh while that or any ultramarines unit has, he has the stubborn special rule within three inches of an objective so that's really handy it doesn't have to be within three inches of him it's of an objective so if you're holding on to objectives people are coming at you you're stubborn you're not moving anywhere and i like that and he's 155 points, so he's not too badly priced up. So I'm hoping to get him in some battle reports. The standard bearer, you possibly won't see. You might do, but I'm, I'm more likely going to keep him in my display cabinet. So, what is next? Well, it only seems fair that I start the Reaver Titan. So that is exactly what I'm doing. I've got some bits sitting in the uh, sink at the moment being washed. That's the left leg. And that's the right leg part. So, my Reaver Titan is next to be built up. He is from the Legion Pregasus Audio Titanicus, which I'm probably saying completely wrong. They were uh, alongside the Ultramarines on Calf. They're a Loyalist Titan Legion. They are pretty damn good. The main colour scheme are white and blue. I will show you a photo Um just towards the end of the video of what hopefully it'll look like when painted up so my titan also has a name as well um, myself and my good friend john who i met in gibraltar were having a conversation the other night and we we're going through titan names and uh tempestus invictus was mentioned and i was like oh i like that one and basically it stands for the unstoppable storm which again i think suits a, a titan so I, again i'm really really looking forward to getting this painted up i think this alongside house fawn her knights that i have will work really well stick a glaive in there maybe reboot a gullum and then eh, yeah no everything will die um the relief this titan has been scaring me for quite some time it's a reaver titan it is not a cheap miniature to buy and that is a lot of parts for one leg and that's a lot of parts for another leg so i've got to go through the instructions and what i have been doing is i've been laying out all the parts in exactly the same picture order that they're in from forge World, and i've been ticking them off as i go now the one thing that has happened with this is there's been a miss mold and i will show you the miss mold from forge World. this can happen um i've contacted forge World custom services and they are sending me a replacement but i'm just waiting on the lead time so this piece here is slightly broken it's probably about half the size it should be. It should actually come down to the end of this ball joint here. So you can actually see completely where it's snapped off. That is not in any of my bags either. So that's actually snapped off in the factory. So, uh, so yeah, sort of disappointing when you spend that much kind of, when you spend that kind of money on, 
a model and then that happens but it's you know what you can't argue with four jawed customer services they're fantastic they're going to send me out a replacement happy days um so while i'm waiting for that replacement i'm going to start to build up the legs and the main body and everything for me john is actually going to take all of the panels that i've got and he's going to airbrush them i've never airbrushed in my entire life everything i do is by hand um, the Titan is daunting enough to then airbrush something for the very first time and it be my Titan is just a no-no to me because I will mess it up. So John has um, offered to airbrush my panels for me, which is very nice of him. And then I'll, he's going to send them back to me or I'll go collect them. And then I'll do all the details on them. So as we are coming to the end now of my Ultramarines journey, the Titan will be the last part of that, unless they release something really cool that I need from Ultramarines. Um, the Titan will be the last miniature added to my 30k Ultramarines. And I have got a backlog of painting waiting to be done. I've got lots of scenery that needs painting up for the channel. So we've got new fresh scenery for you guys out there in our battle reports. I've got Magnus the Red for 40k. I've got Perturabo for 30k. I've got Frecky and Grecky, the two walls from Liam and Russ. Uh, they need painting up. And then I want to start down... The betrayal, of, uh, not the betrayal of Calf, the Burning of Prospero box set that I have, and I want to start my Space Wolves. I, I have loved every single journey of these Ultramarines. I've loved it, and I'm glad you guys have come along with me on this Road to 30k series. But I need to start my Space Wolves for 30k. I really want to get my hands on them now and and start using them. I want to get Lehman Russ. I want to get him painted up, and I just want to get started on them. So we are, as I said, we are coming towards the end of my Ultramarines. I know it is sad. I know it's sad. I know you're feeling the same as me. Um, but what I'm planning on doing is the next video, which will be the very last video in my Road to 30K series, will be a step-by-step -step guide on how I've built my Titan, I think. So we'll go through it. We'll go through the pitfalls together and we'll go through the successes of it together. And you will follow me as I build up my Titan. And then to end off this series, I'm going to do a full on army review with all of my Ultramarines laid out on the table. And we'll go through it all. And I think that'll be a fitting end for a project that um, has probably been about a year and a half now. So by the time this Titan is finished, probably about two years, these Ultramarines have been going. Guys, thank you for watching. Um, please leave a comment. What do you think to my Breacher Squad? Do you like them with their red red marks, their red helmets? Do you, what about the Standard Bearer um, and the Praetor about the idea of running as Captain Ramos? Um, any pitfalls out there for anybody who's ever built a Reaver Titan? Um, any advice that you guys can give me about building it would be fantastic. Um, my next question is as well is when it is time for me to start my 30k Space Wolves, would you like me to do another video log like I've done with my Ultramarines? So a, I don't know, a, rather than Road to 30k because we're there now, I don't know, the Burning of Prospero or something along them lines, I'll have to think what to call it. But would you like another video series following every single unit that I create for my Space Wolves logs like we've done with the Ultramarines? Because I've really enjoyed this journey. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this journey. Um, yeah, it's been fantastic. So thank you for watching, guys. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.